Hey everybody, Blue Goblin here for a special back issue review here on my Blue Goblin X channel. This channel's not dead, just doesn't get as much love as my main channel does, sadly. I am here with a very special back issue review. We're going to talk about nothing but He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Um, I'm going to be reviewing issues 6 through 12 of He-Man. I just got, I'm getting caught up with this series and I've been loving it. Uh, there are some things that bother me, and I'll talk about them when they come up. But it's just nitpicking at best. Okay, we're going to start off with issue number six. Sibling Rivalry. This is the uh, conclusion of the storyline that involved Adora working for Hordak as the character of Despera. Now, in this issue, we get to see Hordak finally make his appearance in this series. And I gotta say, for those of you who grew up watching He-Man and She-Ra and you saw Hordak in the cartoon, that Hordak ain't got shit on the Hordak in this book. Hordak looks badass, in my honest opinion. And very, very well detailed. Very, uh, <laughs> big emphasis on the big evil creature, if you will very very nicely done uh, the storyline wraps up pretty nicely but there's a huge monumental moment now if you follow me on Twitter I said when I was when I said I was gonna review this I warned everybody there is gonna be major spoilers in this video when it comes to this book when it comes to this particular review in this issue we get to see just how evil Hordak is in this issue an unthinkable event happens Castle Grayskull has been destroyed. Wow. It's just, just simply wow. And, and Eternia is, has fallen. Eternia has fallen and King Randor has decreed they need to take back Eternia from Hordak. <sighs> wow. Awesome way to start off catching up on this. And that takes us into issue 7 where we start off the new storyline called What Lies Within. Uh, by the way, in issue 6, the storyline, Adora dis decides to disappear for a while, and it's understandably so. But it's not the last we'll see of her. But here in issue 7 is where the new storyline begins, and this also takes place after the DC Universe versus the He-Man storyline, which I didn't finish. I only read like the first two issues and I didn't finish it, so I don't know what happened there. But this takes place after that happens. And after Eternia has fallen and King Randor says we need to take Eternia back, it's in this issue where they decide, you know, to go ahead and start the assault. And King Randor is a good fighter, a good stra uh, strategist and everything like that. And they're going against Grizzlor, uh, one of Hordak's henchmen. And King Randor's kind of outthinking him when Grizzlor thinks he's one step ahead. When it turns out Randor's overthinking him. And uh, He Man and Tila come in and join the fight and everything. And Grizzlor is given the command by Hordak to use their trump card in this, in this battle. Grizzlor doesn't want to, but Hordak gives the command, and of course, he has to obey his master. And they use said trump card, and He-Man, Randor, Tila, Stratos, all their, the army, they're defeated. And it's at the end of this issue where King Randor makes a very bold suggestion to resurrect the sorceress. Go bring back the sorceress, who has, who has sadly been dead. Very, very well put together issue. Dan Abnett is a, a great writer. He's been a great writer for this after uh, Keith Giffen left at issue six. And then Dan Abnett took over and he's been doing a great job with the writing. However, the artwork here in issue seven, I don't like it. The artwork in issue seven by uh, Rafael Kiana, uh, Kianan, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, but the artwork in here is really scratchy, really sketchy, and it just doesn't fit with this kind of storytelling. It just doesn't for me. And then here in issue 8 we have What Lies Within Part 2. Same team from issue 7 
Abnet and Kianen. Once again, the artwork in here is bad, but it's a step up from issue 7. Issue 7's artwork was really bad. This one is bad, just not as bad. <laughs> you know, they, they have made the decision to travel to Mount Zor to go through the Six Rings of Subternia. The Six Rings, I believe they are the, the, ring of, the Rings of Dreams, Earth, Sky, War, Death, and Eternity. And what they're trying to do is to get into the middle of it to use the Star Seed to resurrect the Sorceress. And only He-Man's sword, the Power Sword, is the key to unlocking the chamber to Subternia to go find this Star Seed. So the first place they go to is the Ring of Dreams. And right off the bat, they got their backs against the wall. Shit's hitting the fan for this team. And they're literally battling, they're literally exhausting themselves fighting. I mean, it's just non-stop fight, 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 fight. You know, just non-stop action. And uh, so just really good stuff. I mean, I've been, been loving this. You know, not too much to spoil here. I mean, it's just, this it, the issue 7 and 8, just it is what it is. Just a lot of action. And that takes us into uh, issue nine. What lies within part three? Now, this is where the storytelling starts get it starts getting interesting. Uh, Michael O'Hare is brought in as the new artist, and thank God, because his artwork is awesome in this series, very awesome. Now, and here is where things start really getting interesting and really shitty for the team, because Tila, Mossman, and Stratos get swallowed by a creature in the Ring of Dreams, and. Adam, of course, assumes that they're dead. By the way, the whole thing with Adam's Prince Adam's secret identity, that he's supposed to keep it a secret that he's He-Man, that's out in the open. Everybody now, now everybody knows that Prince Adam is He-Man. That's one of the things that's been exposed in this series. But Tila, Mossman, and Stratos get swallowed by a creature, and instead of killing them, it transports them to the Ring of Earth, which is a barren wasteland, and there's no there's no plant life or earth life for Mossman to attach to and it's killing him but we'll see them again and then uh, meanwhile Prince Adam you know He-Man and King Randor are left behind to continue the fighting and they found the chain they found the chamber door to the next ring but they can't get it open and that's how that issue ends very very well done the artwork was incredible an incredible step up that takes us into issue 10 with what lies within part 4. And in here, uh, He-Man and King Randor are rescued by the team that they had thought had perished in the Ring of Dreams. Turns out, while in the Ring of Earth, Stratos flew ahead, and he was able, because he could fly, he was able to reach the Ring of the Sky. And that's where they found a loophole in this Six Rings of Subternia. By reaching the Ring of the Sky, they are now able to commandeer a craft and transport to any ring of Saturnia that they choose. And it's just... This is where things start getting a little depressing and kind of heart-wrenching for He-Man. I mean, for He-Man in general. You know, they think you're, they're getting a safe and easy passage to the Star Seed in Saturnia and... King Randor makes a suggestion to Stratos and say, hey, you're probably tired, let me drive the craft for a while. And he takes them straight to the Ring of Death. And the craft that they're flying crashes in the Ring of Death. And they come across, and when the team comes to, they realize they're surrounded by the ancient snake men who once inhabited Eternia long before humans did. And they find they think they find they think they find King Randor trapped under the wreckage, and it's like King Randor, are you okay? And he says, "Yes." Spoiler alert! Big spoiler. At the end of this issue, my heart dropped. Look, I grew up with He-Man when I was a kid. I was a big He-Man fan before the Ninja Turtles came into my life. But when I saw the last page, my heart dropped because King Randor is not King Randor. The last page 
shows King Randor's true identity as King Hiss of the Snake Man. Oh my fucking god. So, that takes us into issue 11. The next part of what lies within. And it's revealed that not only has King Hiss taken the, taken the form and disguised himself as King Randor, but it's hinted at that King Rand, but it's even revealed that King Randor has been dead for God knows how long. And it's left us thinking, how long has King Randor been gone? How long has he been dead? You know, King Hiss even tells He-Man, was I under the guise of King Randor when we lost the fight to Grizzlor and Hordak? Or was I under the guise of King Randor when you were born? You know, and... Oh my god, and King Hiss looks awesome in here. He looks awesome. But to see how King Hiss takes off the King Randor disguise, it's really nasty. And it's just damn chilling. Because it's really hard to look at when you grew up with these characters. And you could just... Uh, my God. Tom uh, Tom Durenick, he takes over as the artist in here. And he did such a good job with the, with the art. Telling the emotional... Just showing the emotion on Adam's face when he realizes his father has may have been dead for God knows how long. Because we never get a definite answer. Just how long has King Hiss been disguised as King Randor? As the late king of Eternia. Just incredible drama in this issue. Just incredible drama. Great action. Good nail-biting cliffhangers that just lead you all over the place. You know, it's, it's just like the, the days of yesteryear when t cartoons or TV shows kept you on the edge of your seat. It's like, how is the hero going to win this fight? It is so well done. Dan Abnett, I give you props, man. You did a great job with this storyline. Fantastic stuff. And that leads us in to issue 12. The same team from issue 11 does the artwork and the writing in here. And I didn't know, I didn't quite know what to think of this cover and then I read it. This is the conclusion of what lies within. Oh man, King Hiss has a plan to throw He-Man into the Star Seed and use the power that was released from it to return the Snake Men to Eternia to reclaim what they feel is theirs. Tila tries to go in for a heroic rescue. Once again, big spoilers in this review. Tila tries to go in for a big rescue, but King Hiss just smacks her off and accident and knocks her into the Star Seed, and you see her body just disintegrate in the fire. Damn! But what it turns out is it didn't kill her. It sent her into a white room where she's greeted by her mother, the Sorceress. Yes, the Sorceress is still dead, but she sees she's like in this white astral projection room. And Tila's talking to her late mother, the sorceress. And the sorceress basically tells her, you know, I had to be a sorceress for Eternia, and that meant sacrificing my motherly duties for you, you know. And the sorceress makes, gives Tila, passes down her, her role to Tila. When Tila emerges from the star seed, Tila is now the new sorceress. I wouldn't have a problem with that except when she emerges as the new sorceress of Eternia she is now the, the goddess of the snake men. I don't like that. I'm sorry. I gotta be honest and call it like I see it. Tila being the new sorceress that I don't have a problem with. But her being the goddess of the snake men I don't like that. And when she emerges as the new sorceress, her character changes. No more smart-ass attitude, bad-ass warrior woman friend who's willing to, you know, lay her own life on the line to save a friend in a, in a fight. No more do we see that character. She's down calm, persevered, 
polite, kind, loving, but yet powerful. No, I don't like that. I don't like that. I think they should, what they should do is give Tila the ability to transform into the sorceress. But when she's in the form of Tila the human, that's when we should get the character of Tila that I've been loving in this series. And then when things get tough, she should use a spell to turn into the sorceress. If this is a permanent 24-7 thing, uh-uh. I'm not going to enjoy that. But the thing is, they win the, they win the war and they're back on Eternia. But Tila is the new sorceress and the leader of the Snake Men. And Adam, He-Man, is declared the new king of Eternia. But he doesn't want it. Because that means he has to accept the fact that his father, King Randor, truly is dead. And he also he's also heartbroken by the fact that Tila, a person he cares for, one of his dearest friends in the world, is no longer the woman he knows and loves as a friend. So that's two emotional heartbreakers right there. His father's gone. His best friend is gone. Is kind of gone. She's still alive, but she's not. she may never be the person she once was ever again. And that I don't like. That kind of pisses me off. But they could have easily, it could have been worse. They could have easily just copped out and just resurrected the sorcerers and just hit the reset button, which I think might have been a little worse than this. But I still don't like Tila's new role as the sorceress. I, I don't mind her being it. I just don't like what she's become. If, you, if that makes any sense. And this issue ends on a uh, pretty nice whoa moment concerning Adora. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to ruin that ending. Because it's damn good. Because I'm like, oh my god. Are you serious? It's one of those kinds of endings. This was really good. It ha this whole entire series, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, has been fucking incredible. I know I haven't been 100% fair to DC at times when it comes to reviewing their books, but I have to give credit where credit is due, and I, as a fan, I do have to thank them for reigniting my fanship for these characters, for this franchise. This has been really good. I'm glad I took the time to have these back issues reordered. Thank you, Sarah, at Arkham Comics. I'm glad I took the time to ask to get these back issues reordered so I can get caught up on this. And now it's on my pool, so I'll be reviewing it regularly. But just, just fantastic stuff. I've been loving this. And uh, thanks also to my bro, the Mount Vernon Kid, for getting me started on it through Midtown Comics. This was really good. Really good stuff. Well, that's all for this special back issue review, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed this special... I guess you can call it a tribute to He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Please subscribe to this channel. Don't forget my main channel, Blue Goblin 01. Don't forget my bro, the Mount Vernon Kid. Follow me on Twitter, at BlueGoblin01, or follow me on Tumblr, BlueGoblin.tumblr.com. Uh, also, don't forget about my, me at me and everybody at Dark Avenger Inc. Plus. Also, Mark and Chloe at Fast Second Comics. And, of course, two of my oldest buddies from here on YouTube, Deadpoolzilla and Brandon Hex. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and until next time, I'll see you all later.